Hey guys, welcome to us. It's the second episode of Going Dutch. I'm your host, Dutch Beak. I'm here with former Marlin and current Japanese pitcher. I can never, I, I, terrible at pronouncing cities and especially Japanese cities, but Fukuoka? Fukuoka. Fukuoka. <laughs> uh, SoftBank Hawks. First of all, I want you to. I want to ask you. Do you know you st- have like a small cult following still with Marlins fans? I do like, I really? do you do you still see that? Do you ever see that in your like mentions on Twitter or anything? Like, sm- like uh, you you have a small cult following here still. I, I um. Everyone I, loves the Holland Hammer. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> uh, every once in a while on Twitter, there will something will pop up, and um, I spent eight years with the, with the Marlins, and um, I was such a young you know, young guy when I signed with them. So I'm very happy that people are still following me. And uh, I, I, the Marlins still, I mean, it's obviously a special place in my heart. So. Yeah. Like when people, when I told people that I was doing this, like there was a good amount of people that were excited. They, they love the Holland hammer. I'm happy to hear that because my performance <laughs> down in Miami, you know, it was, it was okay. So, eh, you know, it was good to have at least one Dutch guy. In the MLB, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, first of all, how how is how have you been during this Corona stuff? How has it been over there? Everything been safe and stuff? Yeah, we've been keeping safe. Me, and my family are safe, so um, we're very uh, very happy with that. Um, you know, the season obviously it's been uh, very unique. Uh, I never experienced anything like that, uh, where we just had a, a break. Um, because of the COVID, uh, you saw it develop here around the country. Uh, it was slowly uh, creeping up. I think um, it had similar um, s- similar ways of developing uh, as in other parts of the world. So I think we were kind of, you know, one of the later countries to catch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, it started to drop, um, started to have rumors that we're going to start the season again. Uh, and then we started the season uh, a few weeks ago. So um yeah it's you know we're playing ball which is great uh, there's some fans now in the stands which is great uh and slowly um depending on uh, how it all will develop uh, if it will get worse or not i guess uh, they will um, continue to have fans come in and out so yeah it must be nice i mean we still can't seem to figure it out over here where <laughs> well, <laughs> we got to play ball as well which is pretty cool. yeah we're gonna play ball it, it, and it's interesting it's I thought baseball, I mean, I love baseball, and I thought it would be weird watching these games without fans. Um, I don't know if you guys played any games without them, but... We did. Uh, did that feel different, playing without fans? 100%. Uh, there, there were moments it was complete silence when you're on the mound, you know? That's mm-hmm. that's very rare. I mean, um, I played around the minor leagues. I played in a pro player stadium uh, on a Tuesday getaway day. <laughs> we didn't draw many fans either, but uh, they were so fun. And now there were, were nothing. You hear, you know, your teammates in the dugout and things like that. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Japanese baseball, but the um, the fans here, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite an atmosphere that they create. And it's, it's nine like innings. Of, game. Yeah, it's nine yeah. innings of um, com- uh, uh, cheerleading, and um, you know they're singing songs back and forward. So it's mm. really it's really cool. It's funny you say that about Pro Player Stadium because it's like every uh, everybody they talk to in the MLB who uh, they ask like, oh, how, how's it like playing with fans? Like there's been like five players that were like, oh, I played for the Marlins or it kind of feels like playing in Miami. So it's funny that that's like everybody's just first instinct is, oh, it's like playing in Miami. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> it's it was like, there were certain day games where it just, especially like in, in what, July, August, you know, it's, you know, how to get, and then, you know, it, are people going to sit in the stands, you know, if, mm. if you were a team that's competing, you know, to, to win the, uh, the NL East or something like that, maybe it would, you know, draw some more attention, but, um, you know, there were, I guess there weren't many fans that were up, up for it at that point. So. No, I mean, those Sunday, Sunday afternoons, Sunday afternoons at Pro Player, it's no one was going. No one, it was, no one was sitting in a hundred degree weather, 
Or yeah. depends who we played, you know. Sometimes <laughs> we played like Mets, you know. We played in Mets and we packed with Mets fans. So yeah, uh, there were certain fans that, you know, for certain teams that would draw a lot of fans, which was pretty cool. Have you been back here and never seen the new park yet? I know. I haven't seen. I saw the new park from a distance. I've been back. Uh, I got back there in 2015. I did visit uh, Jupiter. I went mm-hmm. to the spring training site, um, which was really cool that to return to. There was no, unfortunately, there was nobody there. Uh, so I didn't get to run into anybody, but it was cool to be back. I saw from the I-95, I saw uh, the new Martin's Park and it looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never been in, but I mean, seeing it from the TV, it looks it looks really nice. Bringing, your, bringing it back to your time with the Marlins, is there, do you have like one special memory with your short time here? Or? Uh, well, there's, there's, I have many memories. Um, you know, my, my, my baseball blueprint started with the Marlins. So, um, you know, just coming up, coming up throughout the minor leagues and uh, making it through the big leagues, um, uh, pitching against, uh, you know, heroes that, that I grew up watching, like Andrew Jones, you know, that was one of mm-hmm. the guys that, that paved the way, um, you know, for, for Dutch guys, you know, for guys from Curacao. So, uh, I got to face him, um, in the, in the NL East, you know, we faced them all the time. So, um, that was like a dream come true. Um, just making my debut, you know, like things like that. Um, getting my first big league win against John Smoltz, um, getting a, a major league hit, you know, I got one uh, off Tim Hudson, you know, things like that. But uh, playing with, with, with superstars like Miguel Cabrera, um, Josh Johnson, uh, you know, guys like that. I mean, Dan Ogla was, it was awesome. Um, so there's, there's many, many, many memories, you know, the list goes on, but. Those are a few. And uh, I'm sure one of your uh, favorite memories is how your career kind of started in typical Miami fashion in the rain delay. Yeah, man. It was, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, I think it was like I threw four, I think four and a third or four and two thirds. And I think I still had the lead as well. It was like maybe three to two or four to three or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it just started pouring rain. I was like, oh, no, you know, I got a chance maybe to win right here. And. Um, I think we, we got delayed for a few hours and we picked it up like two, two, hours, two or three hours later and uh, I didn't get back out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, still, I mean, those were amazing memories because my family was in the stands. My mom, dad, and my sister were there for that. And um, that was definitely a special, special day, special moment. Yeah, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, my dad was never a big baseball fan, but I remember him, because he's born obviously in Rotterdam, I remember he would want to go to a game when Van and Herc was pitching. He was like amazed, amazed that someone from Holland was, first of all, playing Major League Baseball, and secondly, playing for the Marlins. Are you sure that was because of me, or that was because they served Heineken in the stadium? Or both, probably both, <laughs> probably both. But going back, like, what made you in Holland from Eindhoven, like? want to play baseball when like soccer is such a big sport you know there's like other big sports over there and, and i'm sure when you were growing up i mean it's grown a little bit baseball wasn't too big over there no you know what actually baseball as far as you know dutch baseball terms it was it was it was booming at the time baseball was. Mm. yeah for for baseball like sports terms in the netherlands it wasn't still very big but it was mm-hmm. it was it was pretty big and it, it, it was grown a lot. Um, my my dad was a was a coach, uh, a baseball coach. I played soccer. I did judo. Uh, I did long track speed skating. You know, typical Dutch sport. Mm-hmm. Is that me? Yeah, you're going in and out. I mean, your, your audio is going. Your video is going out. The- got some heavy you right no you're going out not sure what's going on okay now 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 you're better now you're better okay. sorry guys yeah um, uh, yeah, so he, he transferred the, the love of the game over to me, and um, yeah, it was all about baseball in our ho- in our household, you know, from videos to uh, uh, video uh, to tapes in the car and things like that. And 
you know, I, I just, I just fell in love with it myself. Were like your, your friends, was it like hard to like explain to your friends or like were your friends all interested in it and stuff like that? We were able to uh, play outside outside the house as well, and um, you know there was multiple sports we played, but you know there was also a select group of guys that that played baseball as well. So yeah, and then um, you come you come to Fort Lauderdale, you graduate, then you're drafted. Was it different to come and play baseball in America, like? Even though you were like, how how different is um, minor league baseball from the league over in Holland? Uh, so, um, you know, you roll into the minor league system. I think the the most important thing was just adjusting to the the culture at first. Um, because that's of course a big a big difference. It's a big responsibility. Um, so that was definitely also a uh, a challenge at times. Um, and of course, minor league. No, are we not nah. back? No, it keeps going. Now, nah, now nah, you're good. Um, wh where? What's the last part you heard? None of it. Oh man. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I when I graduated, I signed as a non-drafted international signing free agent, mm -hmm. um, and I think the the first uh, big adjustment was just adjusting to the culture. Um, coming from the Netherlands, I was 16 years old. Um, that's a big responsibility. Being a we good again? Yeah, we're good again. Yeah. You like pause and then your audio goes like out every like two minutes you, you go, can you you can hear me good though like you can yeah, hear me. I can hear you. you're not you're not nothing is happening yeah what yeah you, okay, you're, okay you're good now you're good now. all right so but uh yeah yeah okay so you you get to you get you know to jupiter uh, and there's all people all over the world from latin america to all over the world japan um mm -hmm. guys from from europe um and Life back on. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, we're good again? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. So um, it's a high level. Mm -hmm. Okay, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, if you guys noticed that it's hard to connect from Japan and uh, South Florida, so we're doing our best with the audio. Um, so you get to play with the national team uh, in the 2009 World Baseball Classic and other World Baseball Classics. And one game that always pops out to me, um, I don't believe you were actually playing in the game, but the Dominican Republic upsets yeah. in 2009. Where do those rank? I mean, you've played in a lot of big games in the international level, but does that rank high on your list of absolutely. moments in baseball? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that was a, 
David versus Goliath story. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Dominican. I mean, what what a team! Unbelievable, um, like MLB All Stars. Um, and we played with this very young squad, you know. Um, uh, but we, you know, somehow we we put ourselves in a position against them where we were able to put the pressure on them, and uh, we came through. And I mean, that was one of one for for our national team. That was one of the biggest wins that we've ever. Um, got as a national team um so that that's that definitely ranks up there it's huge I mean, it's probably like one of for baseball terms one probably one of the biggest international upsets ever right with those 2000 i mean because those 2009 guys for holland weren't the holland we know now with like no. the talent they have now Right. Like it was a much, much different roster back then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kenley Jensen, Kenley Jensen caught me in the 2000s. Yeah, he was a catcher. Kenley Jensen, so. the, that's how you know it was different. The yeah. all, one, yeah. of the best one, one of the best closes in professional baseball was a catcher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that I think that's, you know, sums it all up right there. So, yeah. How, how are the World Baseball Classics? Like, we had – we had a game. I remember going to a game that year. I went to the game that actually you guys got we got eliminated in in Miami. Yeah. Um, but we had a game last time this tournament happened, where you know the atmosphere was. It was Dominican Republic versus United States, and the atmosphere was like a soccer game, like how you described a baseball game in Japan. As terms of like an overall atmosphere in tournament, is the do you love the World Baseball Club? like? Is the World Baseball Classic up there as like this great baseball event? Yeah, I I, I think so. I mean, it's it's a great event. Uh, you get to wear your you, you know your national team jersey. Um, for me, there was a lot of pressure that I that I put on myself because of that, um, mm -hmm. and I felt I felt like in my World Baseball Classic performance, I I feel like I have underperformed uh, by just you know, feeling that pressure, but getting to play with all your countrymen, uh, getting to, you know, to get together and um, accomplish something great for your nation, for, for everybody um, back home, it's something very special. Uh, and it also shows the passion ar around the world for baseball, um, especially when you play, you know, the teams like uh, Taiwan or South Korea, uh, Japan, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, Puerto Rico, Venezuela. I mean, it's, United States, um, you know, it's, uh, you see it, it's like, uh, they, they bring their culture to the stadium and, and they make it this, this huge show, you know, and it's definitely something special to be part of and to experience as a baseball player. Yeah. Cause I mean, I remember, I remember the 2017, you know, that loss to Puerto Rico was right up there in my heartbreak list of sporting events. Like it, it, I didn't think it would like hurt that bad, but like it felt just like Holland being kicked out of the World Cup, especially yeah. especially the especially the way that happened because it's I mean we're just getting it now here, but the runner on second to start extra yeah. innings and like it was just like damn yeah and you know what I mean uh, looking back at that game uh, we you know we pitched we pitched an amazing game uh, I think from the third inning on it was a shutout for us and. Um, uh, I think we we there were a few mistakes that we made in that game where we could have been, you know, on top, you know, and and that's the mm -hmm. difference, you know, it's a run here or a run there, but that's a difference in a tournament like that. And uh, you knew when you go to extra innings and you're up first, like that in that's the you know the moment to strike, and um, you know you got a runner on second base and you just try to get it done, and they did. So I mean, hats off to them; they had a good team, and um, you know. It's a, it's a victory for them. Do you think that like the Kingdom of the Netherlands winning a World Series could do a lot to grow the game in like a national level in Holland? Oh, uh, that's a tough question. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, cultural wise, baseball is not very attractive. Mm -hmm. um, I think there needs to be a lot of work and uh, needs to be done if we want to grow it in the Netherlands or in Europe period. Um, and I think, uh, of course, is it possible? Of course, but um, definitely need a lot of help from, from 
the MLB, for example, or from other big organizations like MPB or KBO. And, um, you know, I think you can, you can do some stuff with, if, if there's a lot of cool players that come over and try to grow it as well in that way. Um, we saw the games in England, in London. Um, I think it was last year, Boston played um, the Yankees. And those were some crazy games over there, uh, mm -hmm. which draw a lot of fans. So is it pot? I'm not sure if it's possible, but um, it's tough. I think it's a, it's a tough one. I, I mean, I would love it. I mean, I, I was... I promoted this on Facebook to some of my family and I had someone even comment, one of my Dutch uh, family members comment that they didn't know baseball existed. And it was actually on the opening day of the league in Holland. <laughs> I was like, I had saw a link on Twitter of how you can like watch it live. And I was like, here, give it a shot. This is the Dutch league. It starts today. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's you know what it's it's a sh it really is a shame uh, mm -hmm. to some degree because I feel like there's a golden generation right now of baseball of Dutch baseball players um, that are playing you know uh, we had Didi Gregorius uh, Andrelton Simmons etc. Um, at all by media it's not covered at you know at all mm -hmm. so when you you know you leave america after uh playing in the mlb you go to korea was your first stop and then you win there then you go to japan it seems like you just win every year you uh you grace a team in an asian country Join some great teams at some great times, um, and I was, you know, you're able to to play a part in, uh, you know, in, in championship and in the history for those clubs. And um, I went to South Korea, played there two years, won two championships, which was which was. Chips. So, you know, it's it's been. It's been an amazing ride. I have pitched in every finals, in every Korean series or Japan series, um, you know, which is the games that you ultimately ultimately play for. Um, and it's it's really it's been really a blessing, man. Do you like you're so accomplished in in Europe? I mean, sorry, in uh, the Asian countries, and you know, those are two of the two of the three best leagues in the world. You know, like. People, people don't understand that Japanese baseball is better than probably AAA baseball. Like it's like it's a very good league, and so you're so accomplished in the Asian countries. But do you ever feel like giving it a shot to come back if given the opportunity, or do you kind of just like building out this, you know, finish it all in Japan where I've had so much success? Well. Uh, I've I've joked around with, with my agent and I said, hey man, you know, it'd be cool if I can win a World Series ring. And then I got three, <laughs> I, you know, I got a championship in every country that I've played in. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if 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 that's uh, in my future uh, and I'm healthy uh, and I'm pitching, then I would definitely love to do that. Of course. Do you do you like? Is that actually like you used to say you joke about it? But is that like something you still like dream of? Is like. If you've won in Korea, you've won in Japan, but like, is winning a World Series like, would that still be like, you know, my baseball career is complete? Uh, if it, if it would be complete, um, you know, already till this day, I'm I'm very grateful for everything that I've accomplished and and the things that baseball, you know, I got to experience through baseball. Um, so, it will, there needs to be. For everything to come together to win a World Series ring, there's, there's, you know, all stars need to be aligned. So, um, mm -hmm. if that's in my future, then, um, you know, of course, I would embrace that, and that would be definitely uh, a highlight of, of, of the career. Then, yeah. What, 
what do you like the most about the Japanese, not even just baseball culture, but like, it seems like just like a different world. And what do you like the Ooh. best about <laughs> Japanese culture compared to Dutch culture? To the Dutch culture? Um, yeah. I would say on the top of my head right now, um, oof, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. You know, um, there's a lot of differences in cultures, uh, and the Japanese, the Japanese culture, um, I feel like the the eye for the details, um, for the very small details is at a very high level here. Um, mm -hmm compared to the Dutch culture. In the Dutch culture, I feel like we are more direct uh, yeah. than, than in the Japanese culture. Hierarchy plays a huge role here. In the Netherlands, it doesn't. Um, so I feel like it's a little bit more obedient in, in Japan than it is in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just, it, I feel like it's a, a little bit of a different mindset that you carry, I guess, with you. Uh, in order to adjust the right way, yeah. yeah. And you, you've mentioned that uh, the fans there are great, and it's like, does it like add, you know? Because you, when you pitched here, like it's true, like you didn't when you had pitching in America. A lot of the times, the stadiums are empty, and it's there's like this baseball culture here in America where you have to play the game the right way. You know, you can't, there's a bunch of unwritten rules. Was that a culture shock going from playing in America where, you know, you kind of can't show excitement as, as, as like dull as it sounds like you can't show excitement for doing something good. In, in the, the MLB. And in, in, in the state, like, you know, if you, you watch a home run in the MLB, you hit a home run, you're watching it. You're getting 99 miles at your back the next time. Well, it, seems, to it, seems, it seems to be a trend right now to do that. Yeah. So, like, in, in, in Japan, you know, you see the bad flips. Like, that one bad flip you see in Japan gets you, like, a hospital trip in America. So, like, <laughs> it, it's like, was that a big culture shock? I think the bad flips, that was in Korea, um, just part of the game, you know. Mm -hmm. guy, guys bat flipping a can of corn in the left field. So, yeah. You know, it's so it's just like it's it's part of the game. Um, I guess you you learn how to deal with it, and you just have to you know, stick to your game and just you know shove it up their butt by pitching well. Um, so I guess that way would be um, the retaliation, in my opinion. Uh, in Japan, it's it's a bit more uh, respectful. I feel like, uh, although you know, there's still those there's still some unwritten rules. They're not as, uh, I feel not as deep as in the States. So that's, it's definitely a, a bit different. Yeah. Do you, do you think that, cause here, and I've been wanting to ask a player this, cause it seems like here we have like a youth issue with baseball in like certain communities and certain, you know, places around the United States, like the kids aren't playing as baseball as much and you've played in America. And do you think these like the baseball culture in America of not being able to express yourself hurts? But I, I, I it seems to me like they are expressing themselves more now than ever before in the, in the States. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you're starting to see it, but I mean, like, you know, it's still like you're starting to see the bad flips more. But like, if you still look at that home run for one second too long, it's going to be a problem. Well, if you see it, to me, if you see pitchers uh, going, throwing a ball up and in, and I'm not, it's not even that up and in, but up in the zone and in. Nowadays, they're like walking in the box. They start walking in the box towards you. Like you're mm -hmm. not allowed to go up and in. It's like, yeah, you know, these guys are trying to take your head off as well. I mean, that's, you know, like Sandy Kofex, you know, he said it. He said, you know, pitching is the art of instilling fear. And um, 
it's that's part of the game. Um, and it seems like in the States, they're expressing more and more, it, 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 I think. Um, so, but those unwritten rules, they're necessary. Um, and I think it's a good thing that, that they're there, um, you know, to protect your guys and, and, and to play the game the right way. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys have Adam Jones now, right? Yeah. Uh, he's with the Oryx Buffaloes. Yeah. Oh, he's not with you guys? No, he's with the, he's with another team. Oh, um, I misread my information then. I thought that was – have you played him yet? Yeah, we have. We have. Did, did you – was that cool? Was that weird? Because he was like – you were, you played with him in Baltimore for a yeah. bit, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, was that weird seeing him over there? Like, Because he was – when you were in Baltimore, he was like a superstar. 100%. Uh, and he came – he actually came to Europe – twice um to join the european big league tour mm -hmm. uh, to promote baseball around europe which was awesome him and his wife came over and they did a they did some great work and um taught a lot of kids baseball so um you know he he was with the diamondbacks the year we i think the year before this this one and yeah uh, i'm not sure if he got any offers I, I don't i don't think he he did get any offers which is insane yeah it's i, I mean I'm sure he's a great, you know, he's 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 a great player, and uh, I think he got an opportunity uh, to come and play in Japan and to experience, you know, this um, the life here and 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 the, the style of play and everything. So uh, I think he he took the opportunity, and uh, you know, he hasn't been fully getting the you know the the whole fan experience and everything like that. But hopefully, when the fans return, he will. Is that something you would suggest to like all of those guys that are here in America that, you know, they're, you know, they struggle between pick, taking that non roster and uh signing and, you know, trying to make their way out of camp, you know, and that Japanese offer seems always seems intriguing to those guys. Like, do you always encourage that? Like, you know, that, you know, Japanese baseball is great, you know? Japanese baseball is great. Uh, but it's not for everybody. Um, it's not only the baseball, you know, you got to adjust to the culture. You got to adjust to um, the lifestyle here, the, the food, you know, which is, I think it's great, but not everybody likes it. Um, so there's more parts you have to adjust to. Um, there's, of course, there's some, um, you know, you got nature plays a big role here. You know, you have earthquakes and tsunamis and, um, uh, uh, water uh, landslides and things like that from heavy rainfall and um, so you know it's not it's not for everybody um, there's been there's been a few big names that came over and um, because of an, an earthquake they have decided you know to to return back to the state so um, that's a tough that's a tough question to answer really um, because you know the big leagues is, is of course you know the MLB is the MLB so uh, for some guys, they don't want to take, you know, the trip down here. Some guys do. Some guys, like Mike Hullis, he came over here and, and he did amazing. And then he ended up with signing a great deal with the Cardinals. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it seems like uh, that's kind of been a new thing, too, is, like, guys uh, play really well in Japan. They get rewarded with another contract and revive their career here. It happened um, it's early. His name's popped in my mind it was uh first baseman for the brewers eric thames eric thames yeah yeah, yeah he was, he you was know. With, uh, he's with the nationals now but he um he was in south korea um and he, uh, there was a year that we played against each other in south korea mm -hmm. and we killed it over there killed it um and then he got he got a chance in the, in, in the mlb so um and did well so it's it's definitely possible and um, you get great playing time. You get your at bats. You know, uh, I think it's a great you know place to develop as well. Um, sometimes in the states, you know, the room for development um, that that window closes quickly um, because you're in the big leagues, and then you know you you have the options and um, you have so many players. So yeah, it's 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 up to the player really. 
All right, last question. I think this is a question that my dad would have loved would love to ask a famous Dutch athlete is <laughs> what is your favorite Dutch snack? My favorite Dutch snack. Yeah. Uh, first thing that comes to mind, I would say uh, broodje croquette is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's his. I, I call the bitter ballen, but like bitter ballen is, is amazing. Bitter, well. bitter ballen. I just I just found out actually that there's a uh, in Boca. Um, there's actually a big uh, distributor. This Dutch guy distributes bitter ballen. From Boca, like in, in box, so it's that was good to find out. Nice, but man. uh, you should order some. I am, I am. Do you ever get stuff sent over there? Like, yeah, we got we got most of the time. I mean, the previous years we had family come over, you know, um, about every month or friends, and they bring some, you know, young cheese or old cheese and mm. uh, some, some Dutch deli delicacies. and um, so we enjoy that very much, you know, dust chocolates and things like that. All right. I, I appreciate you coming on. This was, this was, uh, I like really appreciate it. This is a dream for 10 year old me watching, uh, <laughs> you play for the Marlins and, uh, yeah, seeing you, a Dutch man. guy in the Marlins. It was a dream yeah. to talk to you. Thank you. And to all the, 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 the following in, in South Florida, I really appreciate the support throughout my career. So thank you guys. You got, you got. If it's not you playing, you got to come here and watch a game oh, in, the I mean, new, in the new stadium. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would love to, man. I can't wait. I've never been, and I really want to want to see it. So hopefully, maybe I get to play in it still. Who knows? Yeah, that that, that would be that would be great. Hopefully, if anything, in the next World Baseball Classic. Yeah, that'd be sick too. That'd be really cool. All right, I appreciate it, man. All right, thank you for having me, man. Have a great day. You too. See ya.